For those of us that were in the gifts, Harvest the Gifts of Aging workshop the last three days, there was about 35 of us. We already fell in love with this guy, so I hope the rest of you do. You get a little bit of him, not as much as we got the last three days, but what a perfect speaker to have on Father's Day because he's the father of six children, two grandchildren. He spent a lot of time in his career developing and directing residential care programs for abused children and youth. He's a certified saging leader with Saging International, and he's uh, also a commissioned pastor as a hospital chaplain. So please welcome our guest speaker, Dennis Stamper. Thank you so much. Um, you guys, do you know what you just did? You sang a James Taylor song. North Carolina, just before I came up here, I'm from North Carolina. James Taylor's grandfather lived in the town that I live in, and he spent half his life in my hometown. So, <laughs> so I know I'm, I'm welcomed, and, and this, afternoon, uh, this afternoon in my plane, I'm going to Carolina. But, uh, uh, <laughs> But it has been a pleasure to be here with you. And as a father of six, it would be remiss, I would be remiss if I didn't add my wishes to wishing you all a, a happy Father's Day too, whether you're like me, a biological father, a stepfather, and an adoptive father. Uh, but to all you mentors, you guides, you encouragers, you protectors, you friends to those coming behind you, uh, I wish you all a happy Father's Day because there's many ways to be a father, and we need them all. But it has been a real privilege to be here and to get to know some of you folks. Um, the folks that were in the workshop can tell you that I'm, I'm pretty passionate about, about this stuff, about finding a more positive and empowering image for all of us as we grow older. Because one thing we all have in common in here, no matter how young or how old you are, we all have one thing in common. Today, we are one day older than we were yesterday. <laughs> and tomorrow will be one more. That we are all moving toward our elderhood, we are all aging, and yet our culture gives us so few positive images of that. We're told we're going to be over the hill. The songs say, wish us to be forever young. The advertisers tell us, buy this, and you don't ever have to be old, or at least don't let them see you looking old, you know? Uh, all of those images. And so for many of us, I know for myself, I kind of came into this time of my life kicking and screaming, but, but I got here anyway. <laughs> and when I got here, I found that there's actually an awful lot of amazing gifts of reaching our elder years. And I find myself saying, why didn't somebody tell me this years ago? And I might have actually looked forward to the journey. And so that's a lot about what, why I'm so passionate about this. And we, we talked this week um, about some of those gifts of aging. Um, one of those gifts is just the aging, gift of aging itself, to be able to get to be old. That means our life wasn't cut short. We got to live the entire trajectory of our life. Because you see, it's not really about being over the hill. It's more like going up a mountain. And the further you go and the higher you get, the, the broader and the more expansive the view, and it's beautiful from up there. So the fact that we got to live till our elder years means we got all the way to the top of the mountain. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't challenges. Yes, there are challenges that come with aging. Just as with any age, I will take the challenges I'm facing over the challenges I had when I was working four part-time jobs, going full-time to graduate school and had a colicky baby at home. I'll take my challenges. So there, there are challenges, and we have to take those seriously. But these gifts are actually become even more precious because of those challenges. And these gifts can also be 
the things that can be our, our best resources for uh, living with those challenges that we have in our life. So just growing older is a, is a blessing in itself that we got there. And then there's also that once we get there, there's more time and space in our life to grow deeper. We're not so cluttered with all the things that we had to do every day that it can be more about being now than doing. And we can grow in deeper connections in our spiritual life with spirit, with God. We can grow in deeper connections with our own inner self, our own truer self. It may be the first time in a long time we can hear our own voice speaking, our own longings can follow those, and we finally have the time and space in our life to pursue those. Deeper connections with others, with nature, all of those things can be blessings of this time. There's also just the harvest of a life lived long. When you've lived a long life, you have so many memories and so many things you've seen and places you've been and, and the people you've known, the people you've loved, the people who have loved you. I remember reading to my children that Dr. Zeus book, All the Places You Will Go, and I loved it. It's just such an inspiring book. I think there needs to be another one for us folks that says, All the Places You Have Been. And to look back on those and treasure them that, yes, just as I say to my child, you're going to have all these adventures in your life. And now to look back that I've got here and say, I got to have all these adventures in my life. And what a blessing that is. And even the challenges that hopefully we learned from. And there's the, the gift of being able to finally at this stage maybe begin to let go of some things that we've carried too long. Other people's expectations, I'm not enough this, I'm too much that. The older we get, the less we care what somebody thinks about us. <laughs> you know? Uh, and so we can let go a lot of that. Maybe letting go of some regrets, some mistakes that we made a long time ago that we did learn something from. And maybe we can even let go of some anger and, and maybe find some forgiveness and some healing of some relationships. But there's the opportunity for, for just letting go of some of that stuff and moving forward into this next stage of our life, this, this culmination of our life, unencumbered by some of that stuff that really doesn't make any difference. Most of that stuff we worried about didn't happen anyway. And if it did, we survived it. And so we, we can let go of even fears. Those fears are those things that we thought might happen that, that didn't destroy us. And even one of the things that happens, and, and you don't realize this till you get older, is that the older you get, the less afraid you are even of death. It doesn't f frighten you much anymore. And if there's not a fear of death, then what else is there to be afraid of? And finally, we have the gift of our own legacy that we begin to realize that when our life here ends, that doesn't mean the story's over. That we're leaving behind valuable lessons that we taught, wonderful memories of shared stories with, with those we leave behind. That in some ways we've contributed, we've made some things different. We've been able to do something and that life will continue on. And, and in being aware of that, we can then use whatever time we have left to build more memories, to teach more lessons, to share more of the things that we'd like to share with those that we love and care and, and to pass the torch. And so we as elders have those gifts that we can nurture and grow. But it's not just about us older folks, because having elders, particularly in a community like this, can be a great blessing to us all. The, there are the, there's a lot of wisdom there, a lot of experience that they've been through. There's, um, they're, they're, these are our mentors, our guides, our encouragers, people that can accompany us on the way. There's the opportunity for those multi-generational conversations and relationships where we learn from each other because it's not just that young folks can learn a lot from older folks, which they can, but older folks can learn a lot from younger folks who are going through a world that 
we didn't live through. And they have experiences that we don't have, and we can learn from them as well. And having the elders among us, there's that real resource for that kind of thing. Elders can provide deep spiritual grounding, a deep spiritual presence that can benefit the whole community. You can feel it when you see those people. And it feels good. And to have those people in the community can help us in our own spiritual journey as well and can, can accompany us along the way. Our elders among us are the keepers of memories, the keepers of the history and the stories I had the opportunity this week to talk with some of you who have been members here forever, right? <laughs> and, and to hear the whole story, tells us you get to see the whole picture, and they can help us to connect the past with the present, which can give us guidance in how we might move forward into the future. And it's important to have those folks that can, that can tell those stories, who know that, who knows why we do it this way <laughs> and what we're doing. The elders can help us to heal old wounds, and we all have them, and sometimes communities do. And the elders can guide us through and give us ways that we can find reconciliation and, and forgiveness, it can help us through those times. Elders have survived very much over the years. They've been through some tough times, and they can give us uh, comfort as as we go through our tough times, that, to give us some hope that, you know, maybe I can make it too. Maybe it'll be okay. Because we're not alone. We have someone there who's been there who can walk, guide and walk through with us. And they can teach us an awful lot about courage and an awful lot about resilience that we can learn from those elders. And then, of course, we benefit all of us from, from the legacy that they live and that they pass down from, to us the memory of those who went before them and, and whose shoulders, they remind us of whose shoulders we stand on because we stand on so many shoulders. And these folks can teach us how to pass the torch with, with dignity and grace. But this is not just about old folks too. For no matter our age, we can cultivate that elder spirit, that elder nature, that willingness to reach out and, and guide and care for those coming behind us because just as we can learn from those who have been places that we have yet to go, others can learn from us because they're places that we have been and things that we have done that they have not. And no matter our age, whether you are 90 or whether you are 9, there's someone coming behind you that might need a hand and we can nurture that within us. Even with very young folks, that, that nervous student, new student at the school who doesn't even know where the restrooms are yet and, and needs a friend, and, and they can be that friend even at nine. There's that fresh young employee or intern that's working at the place where you work that still trying to learn the ropes and still trying to find their own strength and their own gifts. And we can be their advocate. And we can walk alongside them and, and help to open the doors and show them the pathways and introduce them to the right people. There's that new parent who's feeling a bit overwhelmed and, and needs somebody to talk to and maybe some words of encouragement and maybe a babysitter. <laughs> And we can, we can be there with them, and we can be that guide. We can accompany them in that and, and help to ease the burden. Or maybe it's that grieving person who's still trying to figure out what it's like to, to live alone again. And we can go and share a meal with them so they don't have to eat alone and, and accompany them on that journey together and just be present, be present. Or maybe it's that new person or that new family in the community that needs to feel a sense of belonging somewhere. And we can reach out to them and, and bring them in and, and welcome them and make him, them feel that they have a home. Uh, we all need home. We all need belonging. 
So we don't have to wait until we're uh, in our elder years to nurture our elder spirit. Yes, it's important for all of us who have, have finally reached this age in our life to look at those gifts and to open them and nurture them and to be able to then, with that new energy, with that new uh, joy for life, to be able to share that with folks coming behind us. And we in a community like this need to recognize our elders and reach out to them, encourage them as they encourage us and support them and, and benefit from the value of those elders among us in our community. But we can all, all nurture that inner elder self, whether we're 90 or 9, there is always someone who is coming behind us, someone who needs, just like us, a hand, a heart, an ear, a voice, a good word. It's my hope and prayer, and having known some of you already, it is my trust that you will each find that hand, that heart, that ear, that voice, that you'll hear that encouraging word. And it is my hope, my prayer, and it is my trust that you will all do likewise as you care for one another. One of the things I observed, I said in the week, is one thing I've learned about this group is you can't keep your hands off each other. <laughs> you love each other. And so I trust that you will reach out those hands to each other and, and be those encouragers, be those elders of support, no matter your age, no matter. And as you look toward growing older, as the angel said, fear not, <laughs> fear not. Though there are challenges there are wonderful things there as well, and you're not alone. So may it be so, my friends, and may it always be so. Thank you.